Hi, I'm Mark. Welcome back to Foothill Paint Fabrication. Today we're going to cover just a few things I use when I'm spraying. Uh, you guys have heard me say, well, i got to turn the exhaust fan on. Well, this is actually the exhaust fan. It's uh, something I built myself. I also have a filter unit that I will be replacing uh, one section of the garage door. So let me jump in here close and let me, uh, let me show you how I built this thing. It may give you a few ideas how to build something for yourself. Okay, to start off, uh, the, the base of the unit, I guess you'd say, is this uh, steel tube right here, which was a uh, 15 or 20 gallon solvent can, I believe, or maybe grease can, there's a little mini drum. Um, so I got this from my brother-in-law 25 years ago or 30 years ago, I don't know when, but a long time ago. And so what I did, I just cut the end off, the, that's the bottom, and I put an adapter for AC duct, uh, ducting, and then on the other end, this is where the lid would go normally. And uh, I've got some chicken wire wrapped down around here. Several years ago, a squirrel got in through here, got in the shop, and uh, chewed up a bunch of stuff because he couldn't get out. So now I've got chicken wire on here to keep the rabbits and squirrels out. So, and then right here is a three-quarter horsepower uh, 110 motor. And uh, so what this does is it keeps the, the motor and the sparks away from the airflow coming through here. So the air flows across this way, the motor's out here. So I'm not gonna say it's explosion proof, but it's very more explosion proof than you know a box fan or all the other stuff we've all used over the years. So um, it works pretty good. I'm gonna swing you around here on the side and I'll show you uh, what's set up inside. Okay, I don't know how much you guys are gonna be able to see. It's kind of dark in there. So obviously you got blue from me spraying blue. Um, but you can see there's two fans in there. Uh, I just picked these up at the home center. It's uh, just like a replacement fan that's a half inch shaft. And there's a, a piece of angle iron that runs across this way. And there's a bolt on each side that uh, captures it and holds it in the center. And then on the other end, there's another one that goes straight up and down. And they both have pillow block bearings on them, just kind of small, cheap ones. Uh, down inside there. I used to have uh, just bushings in there from like a, a swamp cooler or evaporative cooler, uh, but it was hard to keep them oiled and they would just squeal and the shaft would wobble and everything else. So I replaced those some years ago. So with the two fans, and I have this one very close, this is the inlet side. This is where the ductwork hooks to the two holes that are in the shop. Um, it pulls right here very close because these blades are very close to the edge of this. So it's gets a very good draw and then the other one just keeps it going on there uh, as as it gets out the other side so I don't know what how many CFN this thing is but it does a really good job so I've got it spun up so it spins pretty fast let me plug it in here real quick and I'll show you guys okay hopefully it doesn't fall off the sawhorses here so you can see right there it that's pulling my hand in right there. So it, it's it got quite a bit of uh, suction. i got to be careful when I suck my hand in there. So it, it pulls pretty strongly so it can pull up across my filters or if I have the door cracked. So, you know, it works pretty good. It's spinning pretty fast. And that's basically it. It's not rocket science. So the shaft runs down there. There's a small pulley, maybe... Um, I don't know what diameter that pulley in there is. I, it looks like about a two inch diameter pulley. So I have it overdriven. So the motor uh, spins slower than this shaft. So I've got that adjustable pulley set. So it's a lot bigger. So it overdrives this. So if this is running, uh, the motor's running at 1700 RPM, that means this thing's running at least two grand. So uh, it does a pretty good job. And I'll swing you around the other side and we'll take a look at that end. Okay, so this is the outlet side, and you can see that piece of angle iron in there. There's a bolt up here. I've got, I just took the angle iron and I bent it over and drilled a hole in it, put a nut on there, and it uh, just fits inside that drum really nicely. So, and that's really basically it. It's, uh, it's not super, you know, sophisticated or anything. If the blades on this uh, fan were a little bit bigger, I've been looking for a fan blade where the blade tips get a little bit closer to the edge, it would create more uh, pull. So um, I haven't so far, but uh, this thing, you know, works pretty good for me and it's safer, you know, than, you know, putting a box fan or anything you've got where the uh, fumes are going right across the motor it could ignite the fumes. 
So it's something you guys all need to be aware of. We've all done the box fan thing and everything else, but uh, you know, if you guys have something that you want to build, you could actually use a piece of air conditioning ducting, you know, the big stuff, 12, 14 inch, whatever the big stuff like uh, on the return lines. And then you could just basically build the same thing, but just using that. And then the rest of this, you can pick up this motor was used. I found that uh, I had a washing machine motor in here. I burned it up from overdriving it. And then I picked this up. A friend of mine had it. I think it was off a old rusted out uh, evaporative cooler, a swamp cooler. And so the only thing good left on it was, was the motor. So I grabbed that from him luckily and uh, stuck it on here. So this thing works uh, really well. Obviously I'd love it to be better like a real paint booth, but uh, it's, uh, it works good for me. Okay, and the last thing on this is just where the belt goes through. I just cut a uh, rectangular slot right here and ran just big enough to get the belt through. I used to have uh, some tape uh, across there trying to seal that off, so only just right where the belt went through, uh, try to keep the vapors from getting to the motor, but uh, they flow through here so fast. I, I'm, I'm sure that air is actually going in there and out, so I'm not too worried about it. So uh, then to cover the whole thing up, you guys may recognize this. This is an old five gallon solvent can. And all I did was cut it apart, bend a little flange right here. And it goes right there, just some sheet metal screws and it protects this because this does sit out uh, you know, all year out, out, outside. So let me uh, stick this back together and I'll put it back out where it belongs and then I'll show you guys how it's hooked up. Okay, so the air inlet goes in these spots right here. It's a block wall. These actually held, they were pockets for beams when I first bought this place. Uh, but the ceiling was, you know, I don't know, that's uh, less than six feet off the ground, so you hit your head on them. It's kind of a janky setup. So I put uh, two air in inlets in right there and hooked some ducts to them. And uh, let's go outside, and I'll show you how it hooks up. Okay, so here's the one on the far right as you're facing the wall. You notice this is right on the ground because uh, the shop is buried half in the ground. And then it's just a simple metal duck. Comes over here, goes into a little splitter. It sizes it up one and then the other one connects. And then it connects right to the exhaust fan. So pretty, uh, pretty straightforward really. And then I just have a cord here. I go around the corner, I plug it in. Hope to wire it in so I have a switch. So there's the shop right there. You can see it's half buried in the ground. Here it is in action. A little, a little clear out of the shop right now. Somebody's huffing paint over here. Okay, that was the exhaust uh, fan portion of it that I built myself many years ago. You guys could build something like it too. Um, it's, it's, it's way more efficient than just a box fan or a you know, really strong fan. And it is kind of explosion proof, so it's a lot safer. So I have holes in the back of the shop there, uh, you know, so I can hook on vents and everything. But if you're in your garage or whatever, you got your back door to your uh, backyard, you could open that and put something in the opening and then hook the exhaust fan onto that so it would draw it out, out of the, out of the garage or shop. And then all you have to do is just crack the door on the other side and that's if it's cold weather. Now I've got the door shut right here so I can show you what I'm gonna do. It's a little echoey in here with that door shut. But uh, you know, if, if you're worried about dirt, don't worry about it. It's the bugs that are gonna get you. Now when it's cold, bugs aren't a problem, but it's getting warmer and uh, you know, you turn on light, bright lights and start spraying solvents, the bugs just head for your place, you know, for miles around. So what this filter is going to do is to help stop bugs from coming in. It's going to stop dirt and dust too, but my number one uh, enemy is bugs just like yours. So uh, what I do is I take the top panel off of this roll up door and I just set it aside and I replaced it with a frame that I built out of steel studs, like two by four steel studs and some galvanized angle, uh, angle iron or angle sheet metal that I found at Lowe's. And I just kind of kind of walked around and pictured it in my head and bought a few lengths of everything and I spot welded it together with the MIG welder and screwed it together with sheet metal screws and uh, that's it. So it basically, I built that upper piece but it has holes in it, that's all. So, and it holds uh, spray booth filters and you could use air conditioning filters. 
You just need something to stop the bugs, and if there's a lot of dust blowing around, the dust as well. So let me, uh, let me show you. I got it laying on the ground right here. Let me grab the camera, and I'll show you what it looks like. Okay, here you go. It's nothing special. There's a, uh, that's a steel stud, just a piece of angle iron right there, or angle sheet metal, uh, another steel stud, and another one down there. And then I took some of that really uh, kind of springy foam and put it right there. And uh, that helps seal that to the, right here to the next door, so uh, the door panel. So, and then all I do is this holds four filters for, um, well actually it holds more than four because I have to double them up. So it holds eight spray booth filters in there and we'll get those out of the box and get those up too. So let me pull this panel down right here real quick and then uh, we'll get this one in its place and then I'll show you how it all works. Okay, so I'm gonna take the top panel down and I need the roller plate, the little thing that holds the roller because I'm gonna transfer that to this one. Um, now, ideally, I would have wanted to put those filters at the bottom, but uh, you can't do that. They're, the cables with the spring are attached to the bottom panel. Do not touch it at all. It's, it'll snap and take your fingers off or kill you. So don't mess with those and that's why they have those special plates on them. That's why I'm putting it on the top. So I can easily take this down by myself and uh, swap it out as many times as I need to. Once I put it up, I tend to leave it up for a while. So, but all we have is the cab and the doors to paint and I wanna make sure they come out perfect with the no problems at all, no bugs at all. So that's why I'm going and putting this up. So I'm gonna take this down real quick and then I'll get this one up and then, uh, and then I'll show you how it works. Okay, just like that, I don't know, it took me six, eight minutes to do that, maybe real time. So now we can open the door. Let's go outside and uh, put the filters in. Okay, here are the uh, spray booth filters. You could tell the last thing I painted was orange. I think it was my son's truck or maybe that Chevelle, I don't know. But I don't know if you guys can tell, but if you, z I'll try to zoom in, but See all those little black dots on there? Now that's the sticky side. This side is not sticky. This side is very sticky. So uh, those are all bugs stuck on there. So, you know, that's what kept out of the shop. So some of them may have flown by and stuck into it trying to get in the shop, but all those bugs were stopped by this stuff. So I'm gonna go ahead and just put them in real quick. So the sticky side faces out. And they just kind of pop in here, friction. You know, they have a steel a wire frame inside here that keeps them stiff and then uh, since I have to double them up I just kind of you know squish them in here like this poke them down in there make sure it's airtight or airtight as it can be so I'm gonna go ahead and rush through this real quick and then I'll show you what it looks like from the inside Okay, as soon as I uh, finished shooting this video, I realized I put these filters in backwards. The sticky side faces in and the non-sticky side faces to the exterior. So don't do like I did and <laughs> put them with it wrong and then have to switch them. So sticky side faces in towards your work area and the non-sticky side faces out to the exterior where the air is coming from. Okay, let's go inside and take a look how, how it works. Okay, as you can see, uh, it seals that up. There's no light coming through. Although this is a little flimsy, so it doesn't push up against the, the gasket, the you know garage door gasket and these. So what I do is I just take a block of wood and I just push in right here and I kind of poke it between the uh, spring and the top piece here and it holds it up there, seals it up pretty tight. Not, you know, spray booth tight, but it, we're trying to keep bugs out. So. Um, it works pretty good. When I turn the exhaust fan on, you can feel the air blowing across, coming through them. 
And uh, as you've seen me spray before, the air doesn't clear super fast. This isn't a spray booth, but it's, you know, DIY. So um, it's a lot better than nothing, you know. So just waiting for all the vapor to settle to the ground or whatever, which could ruin your paint job. So this is really what I do here. I'm going to bring you in real close, kind of show you just a, up close of how I put it together. And really, that's about it. Okay, you can see right here, this is the steel stud portion, and that's the foam right there. So this was just a piece of uh, inch and a half by eh, three quarter, some sort of sheet metal at Lowe's. I don't know, it's got a bunch of holes in it. I forget what it was made for. So, and then just for the divider right where they're at, I just put this in there because that's right where the hinges are. So I put another piece in here. And if you could tell right there, I just spot welded that with the MIG welder uh, just to make it nice and rigid. And these pieces weren't long enough, so I just kind of overlapped them and, you know, spot welded them together real quick. Same thing here, steel stud, just kind of spot welded it up there. Screwed the hinges in right here. And that's it. Works pretty good. It just comes over here. Hook the hinges on, hook the roller on the top, and really, you're done. Okay, that's it. Uh, that's my DIY solution, my exhaust fan and my filter system in my door here. Uh, it's, uh, it works out pretty good. Not ideal, but it works out pretty good. What's your solution? I've seen uh, you guys send me some pictures of your shops and your garages. I've seen your homemade uh, spray booths. And they, they look really awesome. So keep sending those pictures in to me. I'd love to see what you guys are building. If you're building a boat, I don't care what you're building. Send in, send in your project pics and uh, I'll post them at the end of the video so everybody else can, uh, you can share it with everybody else. Thanks for joining me here at Foothill Paint Fabrication. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button if you haven't already. And mash that bell icon so you get notifications every time I release a new video. We'll see you on the next one.